gentlemen and disappointments. We are coming to you live from the Woman Caves in New York and Connecticut. My name is Leslie. And my name is Melissa. And we are Verbally Disastrous. Hello, everyone. This is Leslie. Melissa's not here right now. I have two special guests. Their names are Kyle and House. They're from Second Shift Radio on radio.co. I will introduce House and Kyle, and then they could give their own introduction. Welcome, guys. How are you doing? Hey, how's it going? Awesome, Hello. awesome. We are going to discuss childhood memories. I figured that's a topic, because the one time we were all sitting around, you guys brought out some childhood memories that were quite funny, so I figured why not have a podcast topic on it. What would you say is your first childhood memory for both of you? <laughs> I guess my first childhood memory is, you know, Larry lived around the corner for me. House lived around the corner for me. Okay. And I guess my first memory is, I guess, him coming over to my house asking my mother, is Kyle home? Can he come out and play? How old were you? So I would guess I was young. Eight, I was, I was eight, maybe eight, nine, eight, something like that, yeah. So what did you scope him out ahead? Out play. Did you scope him out ahead of time? Well, no, I think he he scoped me out ahead of time. But like, you went over. You made the first move. In, they just they just moved into the neighborhood. Ah, uh, oh, oh, that's how you understand. Okay, that's how. Who lived when, there? when she said, uh, "Um, sure," but after we do our prayers, she opened the door and everybody had on white. That's not what happened, man. <laughs> They're all sitting together, you know, he had his Lord find a way out for all in his orthopedic shoes. Are you guys playing those? That is not what happened, man. <laughs> orthopedic shoes? Yeah, that, 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 that's not what happened, man. Well, refresh his memory then, Kyle. It didn't happen like that. Over in the backyard. See, he's, he's making all this up. No way. He just came around. The, 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 the house and he asked can Kyle come out and play can Kyle and Craig because it was always Kyle and Craig me and my brother when he came out and asked can we come out and play so that's probably how it started did you guys oblige yeah. did you did you say yeah or you go like who the hell is that kid well I was like I don't know how they were thinking I'm sure we did come out and we talked a little bit but that's that's how it began yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's how it began with everybody in our neighborhood. Yeah, you know, we lived in a neighborhood where there was a lot of young kids, and all the young kids would come out and play. And we'd play baseball and we'd play stickball, stickball, and stuff like that. Basketball. Kyle had a basketball court in the backyard. Yeah. A basketball court? You, or is it just like a, a, a spot with a hoop? We had a we had a hoop on the barrage. I should have spot with a hoop. It's not, it wasn't a real court. I, I'm envisioning was, uh, a real court. No, it was a um. See, a house is playing the rim on the garage, on the garage. Okay. Basketball court on the garage. Gotcha. And we played on like I think it was like grass, was it? No, it was oh, driveway. 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 Right. Kyle, how would you describe House when you first saw him? Since he gave his first impression. He was just a kid from the neighborhood, like every other kid from the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He was, he was no different from every other kid in the neighborhood. All right. All right. He was no different. That was special. No, you weren't special, man. With, with, with a helmet kind just... of special? <laughs> <laughs> Again, who told you? <laughs> I think I was too young. You know a guy on the short bus looking the windows. <laughs> That's... <laughs> <You're> <laughs> That's the uh, reference. Was, the, the thing was, back then, it was like, there was nine of us in one house. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, all of my brothers and sisters, it was six girls and three boys. And wow. Everybody gravitated around our house because there were so many people. And, you know, to us to go around the corner, we actually snuck around the corner because we couldn't leave the block. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we got the new kids on the block, so it's Kyle and Craig. That we went over there and see him get introduced ourselves, and he came outside and bring him around the corner. No, 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 we didn't go around the corner either because we 
we couldn't come around the corner as well. So we kind of met on the corner. Ah. Joey it's kind of Joey Bass. We really, we really met on the corner because when we were going to the park, we had to stay on the block. Right. And Joey Bass, I remember him because he was a mechanic. He was a, he was the same age as us, but he knew about cars a lot. A young kid with wrenches in his pocket. Was he born with a wrench in his hand? Probably was. <laughs> he probably was. His mother probably dated a, a grease monkey. Interesting. <laughs> Joey could take apart a car, put it in his basement for winter, and then put it back together in the summertime. So that's how much he knew about cars. Very that's nice. That's how much he knew about cars. Yep. Well, one would say today that the cars today are very basic you know, with all the technology, but you would still think to be able to totally dismantle a car, put it in another location, and then do it again for the sake of seasons changing, that's pretty impressive for a young person as well. He used to do it all the time. Yep, he was brilliant. Would you guys say, um, as far as, now, you guys met when you were, say, eight, uh, your first childhood memory, what what would that be for you, Kyle, and then for you, House? Let's see, my first childhood memory. We used to play um, wiffle ball together. Well, not with a wiffle ball. We used to play with a regular ball, but a, with a wiffle bat. And that's how we used to play baseball together. Because yeah, we were four. Did that hurt when it landed on you? No, it just felt like a regular baseball. But first of all, just to, to clarify something, I wasn't poor. It wasn't hurt. <laughs> No, you may have been poor. I wasn't poor, man. I grew up poor. There's no shame in my shit. (laughs) Well, I grew up in a middle-class family. Family was absolutely middle-class. House. They ate dinner at 5 o'clock. You know, they they did things together. My family was too many of us. My father couldn't catch all of us. Did you have a TV in the house? House? Yeah, we had a TV. No, Um, I'm breaking your chops because there's so many kids. Yeah, well, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, we had, like, one TV specifically Aww. in the summertime. Yeah. Summertime, when it got hot, we would put it in the hallway, and all of us would stand in the shower just to keep cool. <laughs> put it in the hall. Oh, the hallway was cooler? No, the shower was. Oh, the shower. My bad. My bad. Yeah, we, we set it right outside the, the, the bathroom. Oh, I was oh, trying to figure out that. that. Okay. That was our air conditioner. Very interesting. We had one TV, too. I remember having the the one TV in the living room. Whenever I wanted to change the channel really fast, I put the pillow over the TV because I was convinced that when you go to flip the knob real fast that my parents wouldn't hear it. I, <laughs> I may have been right. I may have been wrong on that one. But that, that was what we did to try to move the channel fast because you felt like, oh, geez, this is going to take forever to get to the channel that I want to get to. Speaking of TV, you know what? That's what our parents couldn't hear. But speaking of TV, yep. you know what I remember as one of like the first TV shows I watched? I remember watching Disney on Sundays. Sundays? Sunday morning, camera. right? No, Sunday evening. Oh, Sunday we, evening. We would watch a Disney program, and that's what we would watch. And then at some point later in our lives, we would watch Roots. Oh, interesting. I watch Roots. What's that? That's way, way down the line. What was your knee-jerk opinion when you saw Roots? What did that do to you, for you as a young person? Here's the interesting thing. Hate white people. <laughs> Except for Leslie. That came on, that came on oh, later. Oh, he's going to dress it up. Okay. <laughs> he's going to make him sound great. <laughs> okay. Well, here's, here's the thing. Graphics of things. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember like listening to talking about slavery as a kid. I remember watching it on TV and not thinking a big deal about it. You know, they would teach about slavery, and we'd watch it and I'd watch it with all the kids, and it was no big deal. But then when I saw Roots, <laughs> it was completely different. Like, who, are these, who are these crazy people? You just gave me a memory of uh, high school where I had seen, I had never heard of race issues because I grew up out Oregon and all, everybody looks like me. And I want to say it was high school where they gave a lesson on the Ku Klux Klan 
And I remember freaking out, having goosebumps, saying, like, why are they doing that? What reason, what logical reason are they doing that? They scared me. I had no understanding at the time that it wasn't intended towards me. It was intended towards you guys. I thought that was scary. And I had no idea why they were doing that. I, I felt confused. I remember that. I kind of felt the same way about about the whole race thing. It's like, it didn't make a difference to me. And I remember when I was a young kid, I would go to the YMCA. Mm -hmm. And there was this one white girl that was cute and I used to like her. But I wasn't included with the people <laughs> that liked her. You know? Because I was like the only black guy. I, I remember it um, when I was going, I went to Catholic school early. And uh, when we went to school, um, was the, the, uh, the kids used to go, hey, man, let me rub your head for luck. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Say, what do you got a pot of gold? <laughs> you got a pot of gold on top of your head or what? It's, 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 I, don't, I don't know what it was. Like, Yo, stop touching my head, man. Let me touch your head, man. Let me, let me get some let me, let me get some shine, shine, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> oh my god. And then when and then when roots came out, they one of them would touch it. Oh I'm so sorry, I did not know that this is oh my god, I didn't know that was going on. Yeah, touch my fucking head again. I I didn't see Which roots curse, for the right? record. I yeah, absolutely. Curse. Yes, it's it's explicit, oh. and we're verbally disastrous here. So, what can we say? Anything you, you, didn't, you didn't see roots? No, I have not. And I, it sounds like after we're speaking, I probably should watch it. I remember we used to watch it like as a family. We used to yeah. sit in my mother's room when it came on. I think it was every Sunday or something. We used to watch it. Oh, so it's a TV yeah, show? It it's not a it's not a movie? It was a, it was a series. It was a, it was a series. series. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was one of the first series I ever remember. Yeah. Wow. That's well, yeah, the that first thing good. that you remember as a child. Yeah, that was, that was one of the first. That was the very first series ever. It was Yeah. And it, it came on like every month. It went on for two months almost. And then it, then it extended it. Wow. We went from Roots, then we went to when, when, when Kunta got older, and, and then he had a son, and his son, and, you know, Chicken George, and all kinds of names they had. So you're um, saying that was on the TV in a series from, say, 1970s? Yeah, it was 70s, yeah. 80s, but maybe late 70s. Yeah, I was old, okay. It was one of the first series where each episode continued yeah you know back before that you know it would be a show and then the next week would be another show where they would resolve it at the end you know the show would start and resolve and the next show would come on next week it would start and then resolve but this was the first one where it started the next week it continued the next week it continued three months yep it was really, really the interesting. The more we watched it, the more angry we, the people got. They would gather on the block like, what are we going to do tomorrow? Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember that. You know, when Halloween comes around, we're going to throw pumpkins in the fucking windows. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not supposed to be laughing at that, but I am. <laughs> Speaking of Halloween, <laughs> how did you guys get dressed up for Halloween? I've never, so I've never, never no, you never I've, dress up? <laughs> I've never really liked dressing up for Halloween. Yeah, Way through college, I just didn't like Halloween. No? Oh, I, I dressed up every year as a clown. Nuh-uh, did you? With the big shoes and everything? The nose? Yep, yep. Did you look like Ronald McDonald? No, Darnell McDonald. <laughs> Darnell McDonald? <laughs> <laughs> His cousin. <laughs> I loved Halloween. <laughs> I, I hate Halloween. It's the worst. Why? Is it because you're scared or, or because you feel like, why are all these people uh, emulating death, so to speak? Well, this this comes back to, as, as more of an adult, to see people walking down the street, like covered in blood or with a knife or anything like that, I just never knew if they were real or not. Mm-hmm. 
So I just didn't like Halloween. Oh. I didn't like it in college. Gotcha. I just know nowhere did I like Halloween. When I lived in Brooklyn, I just didn't like any of it. Because you you could take your guard down and then someone could stab you for real. Is that what you were trying to... Absolutely. Okay. I can't believe that because I'm sure he was loving the women in the cat suits. Yeah, yeah, right. I didn't see women in cat suits. The hooer outfits with the nurses and uh, (laughs) the boobs out. Yes, I hate Halloween. Bad woman, you know. You know, the Spandex on the huh? That was the best part of Halloween. (laughs) I don't even remember that. (laughs) Sorry. Sure sure you don't. I... (laughs) He's having a blank. <laughs> it's due to the we're trauma. Drinking, drinking. Oh, hey, speaking of that, at what age did you guys start drinking? Because I'm a late bloomer on that. It wasn't until the military. Wow. Drinking? I, I would say like 12. Oh, my gosh. Where, how do, how do you get it? 11. 11? I would, I would say 10th grade. What's 10th what's grade in high school? Uh... 15? I would say 15. That's when I started. That's, I think, when I had my first drink. How did you guys... We used to hang out in my my travel garage. I was still there licking and drinking in the garage. And and smoke their cigarettes and come outside. We were all high and shit. Did they figure out that you were in their stash? Yeah, my mother used to wet her cigarettes and put it back in the pack. (laughs) And we would take the cigarette. Like, not to wet the whole cigarette. She would wet the tip. Yep. And we would take the cigarette. And if, you, if you if you pulled in from a wet tip, it felt like worms were coming in your mouth. <laughs> I never and wanted to stop smoking. Smoke. Like, oh, I was like, oh, what the hell is that? I stopped smoking after that. That's funny. And my aunt, my aunt would put egg slats in the liquor. Oh, auntie's a so genius. She knew, yeah, she she was new. She was trying to figure out who was drinking the liquor. And I was like, oh, I was drinking liquor. So she went there. She put egg slats in the liquor. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm over here using tie wraps to keep my kids out of the liquor cabinet. Tie wrap the, the handles together. Put x in there. I thought the ingredients nowadays in the x that you couldn't really... I thought they rechanged the design on the x so you couldn't really melt it down and make somebody... Uh... Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sick. It's like the ginger ale, and I can't go from there. <laughs> Here's the interesting thing. Right? When we first started drinking, we would drink malt liquor. We would drink old English 800. We would drink uh, Cold 45. How about Mad Dog? Cold 45. Miller. I didn't drink Mad Dog till college. <laughs> I never drank Mad Dog. I drank Cisco. Cisco. Yeah, I drank Mad Dog in college. I don't remember. So we, drink old, we would drink Old English 800. We would drink all the malt liquors. I think maybe it was because Billy D drank them on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really there was a commercial with him, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, interesting. There was a commercial with Billy D. Williams, and he would drink Cold 45. Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't want to be the cool black guy with the process here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who would want to be him? Then he became a land guy, and I was really convinced that he's a jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question as far as corporal punishment. Did your parents exercise it in the house? If not, why did they feel like that wasn't the wise thing to do? Well, I wouldn't say corporal punishment. I would say assault and battery. <laughs> <laughs> I will concur. That would happen in my household as well. You know, every time you have a person go pick his own beating tool, that's this, you know. That's like choose yeah, your own I, adventure. You remember the book where you used to choose your own adventure? <laughs> <laughs> I With a spin. Got beat. Oh, yeah. I, got beat. I used to cry I when I see beat. the dad pull up in the driveway. I'm like, oh, fuck, it's happening. And it's going down. <laughs> it's exactly how it was with me. It was exactly the same way. My, 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 my dad would beat us with his belt, and my mom would beat us. No, my grandmother would beat us with a switch. Ooh. And you know, switches outside. You go outside and you and you you pick your branch. Yeah. Grandma used to do that to us. She's like, "Oh, go pick out a a 
branch out on this one tree. And we're like, yeah, what's the big deal? That ain't gonna hurt. So she starts t peeling the bark off in front of us with that like sadistic look in her eyes while she's peeling it. Like, oh, your ass is gonna hurt after I'm done with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember one time I, I went outside. I said, I'll, I'll fix her. I got the most heaviest, biggest branch. So I know she couldn't swing it. I was just smile at her and said, hey, here you go. I said, okay. And when I woke up like two days later, <laughs> I realized that that wasn't the right move. <laughs> you didn't have the, the foresight to uh, put books, textbooks in your backside there? <laughs> we didn't take off our pants. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they were hip to that shit. <laughs> there were no books in the, in the pants. We just stripped down. That's right, because remember, they did it when they were younger. They did the book thing. So, yeah. They didn't want, uh, their kids did it. Uh, we, we, remember, they always say, I did things before you even thought about it. You know, my <laughs> father told me? <laughs> what? My father told me that his grandmother used to call the neighbors and say, Come on over, I'm beating the kid. <laughs> right over. Come one, come, come, come all. On, come over and join in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they invite the natives over to watch him beat him. Oh, like an so exhibition. Anything that he did to us was nothing compared to what his parents did to him. Exactly. So one would say House got the worst beating? I felt like I saw death sometimes when I was getting the pound beating. And he used to say, it's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. I'm like, bullshit. Every, every parent said that. <laughs> I, know my, I know my parent said that. <laughs> You know, after, after it was all said and done, I said, I, I hope you're hurting just as much as me, but I don't see the wealth that I have. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. You another the proof is in the pudding. What <laughs> used to confuse me about my parents is like, they would say stuff like, I'm going to knock you in the next week. Oh, I've heard that, yes. I would say, hmm, I'm I got a test tomorrow. <laughs> so I would say some crazy shit, and you know what? I ended up taking the test, and it just it didn't work. Everything I did just didn't work. The best plans, right? Did you ever sneak into abandoned buildings? I know I used to, we used to go climb trees and, and go climb on top of stuff and do the old jump off into the trees. And we did find a little abandoned space and we tried to pretend like play house or whatever. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so did you go up again? Out, out in Oregon. Yeah, right. See, there was... had needles. The, the trees had the trees had needles. Yeah, they had needles in our in our in our um our buildings. We would play doctor. <laughs> I remember playing Don't doctor. Don't put such needles. What are you doing? <laughs> junkies being there. Oh, what a junkie, mom! <laughs> you know that guy standing on the corner nodding and he doesn't never fall. That's a junkie. Oh, so we, we used to sneak into buildings, but we used to sneak into buildings to play Run, Catch, and Kiss. Catch and Kiss? Remember the, Run, Catch, and Kiss. Remember the building on Francis Lewis? Yeah, um, um, um Flamboyant. Flamboyant? Yeah, we used to go in there. That was near the the Flamboyant. We named the building. We lived right next door to my ex-wife's house. The Flamboyant, is that like a gay bar? No, that is <laughs> <laughs> That was a Haitian bar. <laughs> flamboyant meant the flares that they wore. They wore bell bottoms. Okay. I guess that was a flamboyant bar. When we got older, the gay bars turned into like the Ram Rock Club, the High Shoe. The High the Shoe. You know. The Pillow? Yeah, we never went, yeah, the Pillow. We never went to those. Yeah, well, um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs>
Maybe. I said, look, go to go to the car and put my um skates on. And just skate around town. <laughs> <laughs> Anything he's saying right now from the beginning of the very first time he said anything pertaining to gay clubs, he's just making a sound gay. Oh, that didn't happen to our adult time. It was true, man. What, what didn't happen to our adult time? That we came out? I didn't ever come out. I didn't say we came out. I'm saying that the, the club was really gay. You're making the people think that we came out in our adult time. No, <laughs> no, we didn't come out. We just DJ at a gay club. Are you saying we didn't come out? Are you ready? No. <laughs> I'm, not saying, I'm not saying we didn't come out, but well, we did come out. What I'm saying is, we played at a gay club, man. I remember we used to come home, and Julio used to say, "You guys DJ at a gay bar." And we used to tell him, "There's no such thing as a gay bar. There's only gay people." <laughs> comes out of the closet, I will be joining you for that pretty fucking cool after party. Because <laughs> there's a lot of shenanigans that goes on. It's a whole hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> all, I gotta, all I gotta say is that I didn't come out the closet. I'm not intending to come out the closet. But I would do a gay party again. Hell yeah! This is a ton of fun. I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna intend to come out the closet. I'm never coming out of the closet because I don't have to come out the closet. I never got in the closet. <laughs> You'd have to get in it in order to get out of it, uh, right? I would absolutely do another gay party with Kyle. Hell yeah. <laughs> so if yeah, there's anybody yeah, listening, <laughs> for the record, you guys uh, play, you spin house, um, you spin R&B, old school. Let anybody know, because if somebody wants to book you guys, I get a commission because you, you got booked through uh, someone listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we help everyone out, man. We support Hell yeah. business, man. We support our business. You came on our show, you supported us. Yep. You had a hell of a time on there. It was great just meeting you and knowing about you and a bunch of men in construction. Hell yeah. I had fun uh, coming on. You almost forget, oh shit, we're on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I think after the fourth drink. <laughs> I introduced <laughs> I introduced you guys to peanut butter whiskey. Absolutely. Didn't you guys say yeah, that I was I remember the... that. What? Screwball? Did you get here in my house? Didn't you fall peanut butter whiskey? Didn't you take a nap on the toilet like later on that night? Allegedly. I probably <laughs> did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing the peanut butter whiskey. <laughs> we thought you lost it that night. Yeah, we <laughs> 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 Yeah. Kyle. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 okay, I don't know what happened. I, I dozed. Stick your arm out. You got a pulse. <laughs> I just was going to ask if you guys ever did family events with the entire family between your two families, or you guys just did when you would do outings or any kind of adventures, you just do it with your family. That's an interesting question because I've never done anything. Well, I've come to your house and I've had food, but that was it. I don't think you've ever been to my house. <laughs> <laughs> you been to her house, Carl? Yeah, because Crystal used to make food. I used to come over there and eat. Oh, my house. I thought that's over Leslie's house. I came to your house. Remember that time we had that cookout? And oh, you know, once, yeah, we did. Corner? Yes, once we had a cookout in my backyard. That was just me and my brother. It wasn't involving my mother and my family and everything. Well, she was there. She was there. She might have been there, but she wasn't really part of it. You did get very drunk, and I think you fell asleep on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, guys, I'll see you later. I didn't make it. I made it straight to the corner. And I fell asleep. Asleep. asleep right there on the curb. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Your wife had to come get you. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but this was later on when you guys were adults. You guys didn't have like little events that you did like when you were kids, like go to each other's house. Well, I was a DJ. I was a DJ, and I used to have house parties. I used to have the best house parties in Queens. 
Ah, so Kyle didn't need you to go to his house. It was much more fun to go to your house. Absolutely. Right. And then we did cookie parties. We had cookie parties. We did a lot of stuff that middle class children, I put quotation marks up, <laughs> middle class children shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. But you were middle class, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. My family came from the Bronx. My, my family came from the Bronx, and our house felt like the projects. <laughs> <laughs> My family came from Brooklyn, and my family felt very middle class. <laughs> I was so happy to be from the Stone Age. This wraps up episode 17, part A, Favorite Childhood Memories with both House and Kyle. Head back in and check out episode 18 and catch part B to finish the rest of the story. This wraps up another episode on the Verbally Disastrous Podcast that can be found on Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. For more information, head over to www.constructiontales.com. Thank you for listening, and have a great one.